welcome to Educate, Inform, and Challenge. My name is Teresa McLennan, and I'm the Executive Director of the Women and Children's Shelter of Barrie. And the goal of our program is to talk about the lives and experiences of women. We talk about gender-based violence, human trafficking, gender equity, the role of women in leadership and decision-making. We're very thankful that you're with us today and coming along this journey in our discussion. Before we begin, we also want to thank and recognize our Indigenous community partners and elders for allowing us to share in this space, allowing us to use this space to have these conversations. We thank you. I also want to make mention today for anyone who might be listening, today we will be talking about a very sensitive topic. We will be talking about uh, gender-based violence, and we will be listening to one woman's very sensitive and delicate story. We just want to make sure for anyone who's listening today to be mindful of your own wellness. And if you need to take a break from listening to our conversation, please do so. So without further ado, I'm very happy and uh, just pleased to welcome my guest, Hina. And Hina is going to talk to us about her own story. So Hina, welcome to the show. And can you tell us about your life? Thank you, Teresa. Uh, thanks, Hina. Can you tell us about your life before you came to Canada and what your married life looked like? Um, before coming to Canada, I was born and raised in Pakistan and I had a happy home. My parents gave me a good life, good education, so life was beautiful. And um, coming to Canada, I got married and then I came here. I have seen fear in my marriage. I have seen poverty and abuse. I never experienced these emotions back in Pakistan. I never had to. But in Canada, when I, my abuser, my ex-husband was, uh, that's how he was. Uh, I saw my, my father, was a very devoted and supportive life partner to my mom and to his children. So my understanding was that my husband would be similar to him. But sadly, that didn't happen. And um, when I got married and came to Canada, it was a different story for me. It was a different world where I was scared. I was Sometimes I had no money. Sometimes I had little money. So that's what, and then I had children back to back. So that's what was happening. Can you describe for us, just so we have an understanding, what does the role of women look like in Pakistan? What does the respect look like? And I, I really... I think it is so wonderful that you had a father who loved you and, and wanted great things for you. Would it be safe for me to say that that's not how all men view women in Pakistan? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, the upbringing and the cultural values in Pakistan teaches women to be very obedient, first of all, and never complain in any hardship. And especially uh, if you're married, then they can't even think of complaint because it's not easy. Oh, all right. Because sadly, Pakistani women are really brave and courageous, Teresa, because they don't have any police or the government at their back. They have, they have, if they have good husbands, he will support the women. If he, if the woman has a good father or a brother, these are the relationships they support women. If they don't have these relationships, I'm sorry, there will be no police or the government at the back of the women, but women are strong and brave. They never complain, you, because they know it's not how things work. So when you think about However, your there are exceptions in every culture. When you think about now, there your There are exceptions life. in every culture. Yeah, there are exceptions in every culture. Yes, I mean, men back home are good men. You will see good men, and then you will see some abusers. 
which is very much, of course, I guess, anywhere in the world, right? There are definitely right. good men, and we know that there are abusers. So when you speak about your married life, did you recognize and know that that would be abuse at the time? When I was living with him? Initially, no. No, because I was always told that I'm keeping you in the house and you're not contributing financially, so you should be thankful to me. So I never understood that idea because I never heard men really telling women that I can only keep you in the house if you give me money. So I didn't know that in the beginning that that was abuse. I just... I was told these things that he's taking care of me, he's buying me groceries, I'm not working, so I should be very thankful to him. But gradually, I knew that something not right in this marriage because the way he used to treat me and the way he used to talk to me was very disrespectful. I never, I never saw any man treated women that badly, never Teresa. The words he used to use for me they are shameful. They are shameful. I mean, I can never imagine. I don't want that to happen to any women. Honestly speaking, no. And that is why this conversation is so vital and important today, because there can be women who are listening, who are relating to what you're sharing. And it is you know, we, of course, hope any woman who's going to be listening today, and this relates to her, that she will call our crisis line and have the courage to make that call and want to make a change in her life. So, and I'd like to move a little bit in that direction now and just ask you, when you realize that this was not right in terms of how you were being treated, what did you do and how did you know where to go what what did you do to try and get out of that relationship honestly speaking Teresa, i didn't know what to do i did not know what to do when i left my abuser i had two very young children i had very limited money in my hand and it was just like a black tunnel and there was no light there was no light because I'm a woman from Pakistan. Divorce is not a part of my culture. I wanted my married life to work and I didn't want my children to see that abuse. So coming out was not easy. It, it wasn't easy. I didn't know what I was doing that time, but I knew that I'm not going back to him. That was done deal. I knew that I will, because if I go back to him, you know, it's, it wasn't safe for me or my children. So, yeah. And you've really just described very eloquently the difficult decision that women have when they are thinking about leaving. And it can take a long time to make that decision. They are thinking about their children. They are thinking about finances. How am I going to survive? There's also cultural expectations, religious expectations, where women remain in that abusive relationship. So when you made the decision, Hannah, that you knew it wasn't right and you were going to make a change, how did you find out about the Women and Children's Shelter? How a police told me. I'm really grateful that the Barry police really helped me and the courts the courts, they told me to go to the shelter, and then the police told me that this is a Barry Women and Children shelter, and I am really grateful that I came to the shelter. <laughs> it has really changed my life. I mean, shelter has, has literally given me vision. It has changed me as a, as a woman. So we are going to talk a lot more about that journey, right? Because I think that what you offer women in telling your story is hope. Hope that their life can be different, that they can be free of abuse, and that things can change for them. And we know that the court system can be very, very difficult and challenging for women to go through. We know that there's a lot of risk that they take in terms of finances, uh, their children are gonna be feeling a loss, 
but we do really encourage women who are hearing your story today to know that those are barriers that can be overcome. And so when we return, I want to dive into just a little bit more about you personally, Hina, and about your own courage, your own bravery, where that came from, and then talk about your journey when you were here in the shelter, what was offered to you and what your life looks like now. Does that sound like a good place for us to start? Exciting. Yes, of course. Okay. Okay, wonderful. And I think it is just really good, again, that we remind our viewers, we are talking about situations of abuse today. We do recognize that the stories can be very challenging and difficult for any woman or any person who's being abused to hear. We do want to mention always to reach out and contact our crisis line. That number is 705-728-2544. If you are a woman who is living in abuse and you don't know what to do, please call our crisis line. There is someone available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to take your call and to talk to you. Please give us a call. Stay tuned. We will return and carry on this wonderful conversation with Hannah. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Educate, Inform, and Challenge. We are having a very insightful uh, conversation with my friend, Hannah, and we are talking about her experience of abuse. We're talking about her experience as a woman from Pakistan and her journey to healing and her journey to freedom, freedom from violence. And it is an incredible story and we're glad that you're with us. Please be mindful of your own journey uh, if you're hearing Hina's story today and be mindful of your own wellness. Hina, you shared so much with us already and it is so impactful to any woman that is listening right now. Some women are broken. Women are bruised and battered. They are psychologically abused, they're physically abused, financially abused, and it can be hard to pull out the courage and the bravery to make the call to the crisis line or to make a change in their life. You did that. Tell us, tell our viewers, where did your bravery and your courage come from to uproot your children and to make this huge change in your life? Where did that come from? Fear gave me courage to leave an abusive husband. I was tired, Teresa. I have seen poverty in that marriage. I have seen fear. I was so scared of him all the time. Sometimes I had, I needed money for the milk. Sometimes I needed, there were so many things. The winter use was approaching. I had no money to buy them the winter gears. And you know, the harsh weather in Canada. So there were a few things that just gave me courage to, to just leave him. My body was tired. I was a woman who was facing abuse for like past eight years but you know what my my mind was like my mind was telling me that you're you're not gonna live in the victim mode for the rest of your life no and I just did not know what to do but you know what every morning when I used to wake up I had no idea what is going to be that day like but I was I used to give my best that I'm not going to stop here I have to keep going I used to cry I had, I had help through and through. I'm very lucky, I would say. I had police at my back. I had very women and children shelter at my back. So they helped me. So I would say that I'm, I'm lucky. I asked for it. I needed help. Yeah. They gave me help, yes. So they helped me coming out of this journey. I'm grateful. So you came into the shelter with your two children. And my mom, yes. And your mom. Yes. Can you tell us about what you received here in the shelter and how that helped you? Okay, when we were told to leave his house, his sister's house, so we had, I had no option and the cops told me to call 911. So they came and they told me to go to the courthouse the next day. So I went to the courthouse and I would say that it was a long wait. It was a long day. 
it was emotional, Teresa. I would tell the women, whoever is listening to this interview, if they relate a little bit to my story, they can create a better future for themselves. Honestly, they can. The process was really slow. It drained me, but it's worth it. Mm-hmm. It's worth it. And they, I was given the order to go to the shelter right away because of some safety issues. And uh, when I came to the shelter, I received love, care, kindness. They gave me directions. They told me, like, this is this stage you have to... They, I did not know the court system and I did not know the the, the, the process. So there are women who, who, who told me that this day you have to do these, these, these things and the other ladies... And I, I listened to them and I did those things. I used to make sure that I meet my daily deadlines every day. I have seen women, sometimes they don't care. They say, it's okay, I'm not doing it. I am, it's okay, you're not doing it, but you know what, you have to. You have to do it for your children. You have to do it for your better future. I would say just the time you're at the shelter, don't waste it that you're at the shelter build yourself. So at the shelter for our viewers who are listening, we have a incredible team of women that really wrap around incredible. every woman and child who comes into the shelter. And we help women to navigate the court system. We have a family court support program. We have individual group counselors. We have an outreach team. We have a children's program and we have housing support. And so Hannah, when you were uh, making your plans to find housing and, you know, getting your kids in school, all those pieces, right? How did those things fall into place for you? I got help. I told you the, the, the shelter staff, they used to help me through and through. From day one, they used to tell me, okay, you're going to call this person today, Hannah. You're going to call this agency today. So uh, they helped me through every step to get me back on my feet. And even now I can call them and just talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, for our community of listeners, our outreach services will support women after they've left the shelter and there's no end date to what women need. And we know that women may get uh, re-triggered in their trauma. The journey to healing is a very long one. And women can find themselves in a new relationship. And sometimes those old feelings and those old worries and fears will come back to the surface again. So our outreach team really works with women uh, for as long as they need. And women will come back to us. And so, Hannah, I, I know that you had this wraparound of services. Can you tell us about what life looks like now? And maybe let's start with your housing. Were you able to find affordable housing for you and your children? I did. I did. I was, I was managing my money wisely. I, I wouldn't say that I was doing anything stupid. And then, yes, I got help at the right time. And uh, I just, I used to respond to emails and calls right away. I never delayed when I know because... I'm a woman in need. I was a woman in need and I needed help from these agencies and I got it. Mm-hmm. And they were very, they were really kind to me, I would say, Teresa. Well, I think that you are the type of uh, person as well because you did so much of your own work because, you know, we can offer the services, but we need women to partner with us and to do the work they need to do as well, right? And I think that that. also, yeah, that also speaks to the courage and the bravery that you had that you always carried with you to motivate you, right? And so you're you're no longer in the shelter. You have your own home with your your children. And what does life look like now? What things are you doing? What are your goals and dreams? Tell us about your life. Teresa, my life is beautiful and future is bright, definitely. <laughs> I am, I, I'm back in school. I'm with my children. I have time for my hobbies. I ne- in that marriage, I never had time for anything other than washing dishes, cooking meals and doing laundries. I have time for myself. I'm a woman. I enjoy my children. I take them to parks. I take them out. I mean, we have 
And as far as come to goals, I really feel that I want to help women if I can. And I, then I have my personal goals. And uh, yeah. What I love hearing I'm about... Just, I'm, what I love hearing about your story, Hannah, is that you are an empowered woman who is making decisions about what you need for your life, but also what your children need in their lives. And just talking a little bit about your kids, what difference do you think it has made in your children's life that they are no longer living and seeing abuse? My kids, my, my, well, when I left my abuser, my younger one was very little, so he does not remember anything. Mm -hmm. I, I have seen fear in my older one's eyes when I used to live with my ex. Mm -hmm. He used to his unforgiving yelling and screaming in front of children was damaging my kids. Uh, and my, my father is a very mild-mannered man he he is very gentle that was the type of a man I wanted for my children so when I saw him like his screaming and yelling is affecting my children's well-being because I have boys Teresa I don't want that after 20 or 25 years of girls standing in front of me and telling me that your son has done these things to me I would never want that and the other important thing I would say that I knew what the good life looks like. My parents gave me a good life. So I knew what a happy home looks like. I wanted the same for my children. So that's why I just wanted to take them away from that abuse. Because I think every child deserves a better life. Every child. I remember there were a few things happened. Like I asked him for, I, I'm telling about my ex, that I asked him for money for my, for, for kids' pajamas and winter gear and rather than giving that money to me to buy clothing for children he just sent that money to his girlfriend back home that was 300 us dollars i could have done so much with that money for my children i was already living in poverty and he just refused to give me that money there are so many such small incidents teresa that when i think about those things sometimes it makes me cry and sometimes it gives me courage that i can do it I think it is incredible how you've made these life-changing decisions that are for your benefit, but for your children. And we hope that women who are listening today and thinking about their children and what, because we know that children are listening and seeing abuse that is happening to their mothers and it is changing them. And children who live in abuse may grow up to be abused themselves, male or female, or have a higher incidence of becoming an abuser because that is what, honestly, they've grown up in and that is what they know. So Hannah, we are almost at the end of our time together and it has been just such a, a wonderful, thankful conversation that I'm just really glad you were willing and brave to share with our community. If there is a woman who's listening to you right now and she's listening to your story and she needs some words of encouragement and she's living in abuse, what would you say to that woman? I would just say that if a little bit of my story relates to that woman who's listening to this interview, that woman can change her life. She can change her children's life. It's, it's ideal to have both parents around, but if it comes at the risk of the children's well-being, it's better to leave the abusive relationship. My body was tired, Teresa. I was facing so many financial, emotional, psychological issues because of the abuse. But what I remind myself every time, that what I tell myself, that my mind, it just refused to live in the victim mode for the rest of my life. That's what I would tell the women listening to my story, that they can change their life and they can create a better future. Just tell themselves, tell yourselves, women out there, you're not victims. And you know what, Hannah? 
I think it is wonderful. We're, we're having our show and this is, you know, real life and your little guy is behind you. And what I love seeing is that he's free to be himself and, yes. and he is not living in that fear or that violence any longer. And that's because of what you have done. Yes. I have told my children that I'm going to be always there for them and they don't have to worry about anything. I take care of things. They just need a happy childhood. That's what every child deserves. So if you are a woman today and you have listened to Hannah's story and you are feeling like there's pieces that resonate for you, if you are a woman who has children or you don't have children, our services are available to you. And, you know, please take some time to reflect on Hannah's experience because sometimes women will contact our crisis line and they won't actually know that what they're living in is actually abuse. They know it doesn't feel right. They are living in fear. They have to tiptoe around their partner for fear of what might happen to them. You can always call our crisis line. You can always just talk to a counselor at the other end of the line who will help you to talk that out help you to see what's happening in your life and we really just promote and encourage women to use our services and to reach out and again you can call our crisis line that number again is 705-728-2544 the crisis line is available 24 hours a day seven days a week we have an emergency shelter and our outreach services we encourage women to give us a call we are proud and we just want to thank Hina again. Yes, Hina talks about the services she received from us, but Hina made that brave and courageous decision to call that uh, crisis line, to call our shelter and to become involved. Make the call. You're not alone and we're here for you. Thank you.